Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. Today I want to show you the Ripple Edit feature, which has been around in Studio One for quite a while, but it's even more of an essential workflow tool now that we have all these new features in Studio One 6, such as the new video track or spot events, which is a feature that I'm going to cover in an upcoming video. So let's take a look together at Ripple Edit. If you've ever used the video editing software before, then you might be familiar with the concept of Ripple Edit already, which can be engaged by clicking on this button right here. If you don't see that, then it might be because your Studio One window is a bit too small. Or another reason could be that you're currently hiding some of the menu items from view, which is possible in Studio One 6 with the new customization options that we now have. To change that, you just right click in this area here and then click customize. And then you can just set the preset back to complete to get all of the menu items back. The way this is intended to be used is that you can actually hide a couple of the uh, menu buttons that you're not using very often. But that's just a side note. This is a topic for another video. Okay, so if you've set your customization preset to complete and you've double checked that you've maximized your app window, then you should be now able to see the ripple edit button. It's right here. And if you click on that, um, this is what it's going to do. So if you're splitting like you can do now on the video track, finally, in Studio One 6. I'm super excited that this is possible. In previous versions of Studio One, the video track has just been a playback track, essentially. Um, and let's say I'm, you know, just adding a couple of cut points here. And now I have this section in the middle that I'd like to delete. What I don't want to happen, and I'm going to disengage Ripple Edit for just a moment so you see the traditional behavior, is that I now have all these black frames in my video. Right? Like if I open up the video player now on the view and video player or by double clicking the video event, then you're going to see it's now a black frame. And that's not very useful because black frames are usually to be avoided in videography and films and so forth unless it's intended. So that's why Ripple Edit is such a handy feature because what Ripple Edit allows you to do is directly snap the beginning of the following event to the end of the newly split event, like so. Normally, you would have to do that in an extra step, so to say. So you would now have to move that to the cursor position, like so, or by using cut and paste and stuff like that. And all of that can be avoided by using Ripple Edit. And it seems like a small thing at first, but if you do this like 30, 50 times a day, this is going to add up very quickly and be a massive time saver in the long run. Now, this also works with audio, of course. So if you're editing audio, then you can also set split points here. And if Ripple Edit is engaged, you can just close all the gaps immediately, which can be quite useful sometimes. And also when you're replacing certain parts, which is interesting for podcasters, for instance, um, you can just drag a section on top of an existing one and Studio One is going to make the space and fit that in between. So all of these things would basically require you to have so many more extra steps in your workflow if you're doing this kind of work. And if you haven't known about Ripple Edit before, then hopefully you're going to be very happy to find that it exists in Studio One. Thank you for watching.